The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 22nd December 2020, Antarctica. I am. Our journey through the body begins. Me, the body of the earth. On a day like today, in 2012, I started my new time contemplating the sea from the coast of Antarctica, surrounded by penguins and sea lions. I remember now how difficult it was to manage this trip, although with the interdimensional help, everything always becomes more enjoyable. Since February 7, 2012, I had begun a journey around the world following in the footsteps of an ancestral mission called Harwitum, the road from north to south. When the Atlantean colony of Kem failed and succumbed to the domination of the peoples south of the Nile, the Arsaean priests took a vow of words to all the apprentices, who promised to go into exile and take the message of divine consciousness to every corner of the world. These were called Bakiri, meaning walkers, and their path, tomb, would be to bring the word to the world from north Har to south, we. Between February and September, I traveled six continents and two oceans, passing through forty countries. Between September and December, along with three other people, I traveled by car, the body of La Grande Mujer, through Chile, Peru, Bolivia, and Argentina, holding public meetings in the squares of each city. And then the time came when I had to make the leap to the last continent, the white land, Antarctica. And there I had to arrive, yes or yes, on December 21st, 2012. We expected the new cycle, the end of one era and the beginning of another, according to the Mayan tradition. I am. What you didn't know back then is that what you were living was a practice for what you're living now. Me. Yes, now I can see it. At that time, each step was improvised, and therefore I had relegated to others the responsibility of finding the way I could get to Argentina. But it was only two weeks away, and we still had no sign of anything. So I took the initiative. It was my responsibility, and so I did. While driving to Patagonia, on the way to Ushuaia, I called a Chilean company that is dedicated to charter flights to the Antarctic Peninsula. I told them, I have to go there yes or yes on December 21st. They told me that it was impossible because there was a flight on the 19th that returned on the 20th and therefore they did not leave until after Christmas. But I insisted by asking if it was possible that when the 20th arrived, they prepared for a quick flight on the 21st round trip. They said yes, but the weather is irregular, to which I replied, you take care of the plane, I take care of the weather. He must clearly have thought I was crazy. How much does it cost? I asked. And he said, $30,000. To which I said, Okay, book it. In two days, I will make the first deposit for you. Everyone looked at me as if I had lost my mind. And I said, Now I need to get $30,000. I am. Everything is always paid for in the universe. You just have to know who to ask. Money is energy. And if you move energy correctly, the resources will be there. Me. And so it was. In one afternoon, all the people who would pay for the plane appeared, in which six people, three women, and three men would go to King George Island. A friend from Chile made the first payments, and everything was ready, but many things happened in between. All the way I prepared to hand over some copper keys, the towe lumbar, as an offering to the earth. An artisan from Cordoba had taken the mission of making them, but it had been hidden. The locksmith had fallen in love with the key, as it was the first and most powerful to be forged. So he hid it so I would never know about it, but I did. I could feel her hiding in the mountains. So I had to convince him that this key was not mine nor his, it was for Antarctica, and that it had to be given there, and if he did not accept it, maybe he should do it himself. So I brought him with me to the south." But his plane broke down in El Calafate, where they usually make a technical stop, and he would not arrive in time for our departure to Chile. While this was happening, the Ushuaia airport had closed as well as all the ships that connected Argentina with Chile through the Beagle Strait. Therefore, we had to hire a helicopter, which took us to the other side. 
In addition, we had to convince the locksmith to release the key, so that a pilot would bring it to Ushuaia at the request of one of the owners of airports, whom we managed to convince to help us. But I also had to convince the Chilean pilot to pick us up at the Puerto Williams airport, since there was no way to get to Punto Arenas. After convincing all of them, we only had to convince a demon that prevented me from crossing the Drake Pass, which led us to live in exorcism in the lobby of the hotel in front of the tourists, until Merlin's spirit appeared, dissipated everything, and said, I wait for you on the other side. And everything was solved in an instant, all at once. I am. A huge recap of a two-day adventure. Me. Yes, there were too many things that some day I will write with all the details, because they are great. But the point was that we managed to fly on December 21st to Antarctica. Crossing the Drake Pass is like crossing a magic barrier into inhospitable territories where humans do not usually go, to the ends of the earth. And as we approached to land, the landscape reminded me of an alien world, of giant black rocks, ice, and snow. The South Shetland Islands are a group of islands between the Scotia Plate and the West Antarctic Plate off the peninsula. Many penguins inhabit them, just like sea lions, and a few bases from different countries coexist in them. Upon landing, I felt one of the greatest emotions of my life, because I stepped on one of the places that few can step on in the world. The fresh air is like nowhere else, for it is not only free of pollution, but also of humans and thoughts. I could feel as I walked around how the mind was free. The excess oxygen, which generates ozone there, is much more noticeable and active, and made us over-oxygenated, which made us laugh more intensely. That day, we decided to go to Penguin Island, and next to these birds, on an ice altar, we did our ceremony, where we would place the last key. I am. But the hour was up. Me. We had to run in a hurry, because we had little time to be in Antarctica, only two hours. Arminda, who was in the group, said, two hours in Antarctica, and I was only thirty minutes with my eyes open. We laughed, because we had meditated all the time, without seeing the landscape. We ran onto the plane, and the pilot asked, Do you want to stay? To which I said, Yes, please. But it was a joke. And he said, Not me. It's Christmas soon. Then I looked out the window with melancholy, and at the same time joy, while the plane ran on the runway to return to South America. And then the miracle happened. The plane broke down. The landing gear had a problem, and the plane had to brake at high speed by zigzagging before reaching the end of the runway which was a precipice towards the frozen sea. Like a car that drifts sideways when braking hard, the plane was crossed on the runway, but this did not scare us as much as the pilot's response, I'm going to try again. But he didn't make it. We'll have to stay, I don't want to risk it, he said, and our faces couldn't show more happiness. So we returned, and that day we stayed to share with the workers and scientists of the fray base. We went to a glacier, sang and played guitar to the penguins on the coast, and stayed all December 21st and 22nd there, until in the afternoon of a day like today, we came to look for a new plane. I am. It was necessary for them to remain, to perform all the missing task on the white continent. Me. There I received the message of the next part of the road. Turn the key to the Vatican, where we received the prophecy that the next pope would be Argentine and about the blue energy of those who hope to activate our potentials in Antarctica. I am. This continent is the strangest and most unknown of all. It is covered by about 2,000 to 3,000 meters of ice, making it the highest continent in the world on average. During the last 100 million years, it has moved towards the South Pole, covering all its territory under the ice separating from the warmer latitudes such as Australia and South Africa, which hid all its life in history under the cold and the icy layers of eternal snow. The air of the atmosphere, the ionosphere, the information of the magnetic network, all this is discharged by rain, snow, ice on its surface, trapping carbon and hydrogen from the air, that is, everything that has happened on Earth for millions of years is recorded in the largest library in the world. 
Antarctica could cover all of Europe in territory, but only the Antarctic Peninsula has places where it can settle on rocks. Vegetables grow no more than a few algae or lichens on some island. There are no insects, and all the animals that inhabit it are marine. What's underneath is a mystery. Antarctica is the most sacred place that can exist on Earth. It is the temple of history. It is the home of spirit in matter. Me. It is the crown of the world. I am. The white continent represents the crown chakra of the Earth, and its shape resembles a brain, the peninsula being the medulla that comes from the cerebellum, which is West Antarctica. Cerebellum and brain, East Antarctica, are divided by the Trans-Antarctic mountain range, which from Victoria Land to the Weddell Sea activates the pituitary and pineal glands, Berkner Islands. The circle of the crown is heralded by mountain peaks surrounding the continent in the lands of Mary Bird, Ellsworth, Coates, Drawning Maud, Enderby, Kemp, Princess Elizabeth, Wilhelm II, Queen Mary, Wilkes, Terry Adeli, George V, and Oates. The land of Palmer, that is, the mountains and frozen fjords of the peninsula, recall the jewel that adorns the crown standing out above the other peaks, and at its center, the great layer of eternal ice, the maximum purity, where the network of planetary consciousness finds silence, peace, harmony, where there is no load of beliefs, patterns, emotions. Me. It's like hearing and feeling eternity. There is nothing else. No thoughts are heard. There is no confusion. It is all clarity, like heaven itself. The cold invites you to go inside, find the inner warmth. Antarctica is where I felt at peace and eternal happiness for the first time in my entire life, because I felt that I was in the cosmos, in the great library of the universal Akasha, where, of so much information there was, there was nothing to look forward to, only silence and freedom. I am. You will recognize, then, that Antarctica is the crown of the physical body of the world, and to crown yourself in this new world, you must recognize it as your king and queen. Me. When we set foot on King George Island, I felt it was very fitting that just this place reminded me of the coronation. But then I saw that all Antarctic regions are named after Norse or Saxon kings, at least mostly. That is, the coronas of the Arctic crown the Antarctic. I am. Antarctic comes from the Greek anti, opposite, and Arctos, bear. Since, for the ancients, the north was under the constellation of Ursa Major, and therefore the opposite site to that north and bear would be the south. This special continent is the door to all consciousnesses and the union of all their stories, also narrating their future. To connect to Antarctica is to connect to the true crowning of the world. The question is whether we are willing to be the world and to be kings and queens. Me. Today in the pyramid appeared Melchizedek, the king of justice. He told me, the king's rod is his axis of coherence. A king has no power if he has not found it within. That is why now you are ceasing to be a caterpillar, to fly like a butterfly. This is the transformation from unconscious power to conscious power. He made me kneel before him, and he placed on me an icy crown, shaped like Antarctica, with its peninsula on my forehead pointing upwards like the cross, the axis, the jewel. I felt tired, but purity. I felt my mind refreshed, released. I am. The coronation of the king of the new world Thus begins this new cycle. Me. The king is the self, the axis of essence. I am. But only those who recognize the responsibility of being crowned will be crowned by the earth. You took your responsibility, 
and now you have received the attributes anointed by the axis of the world. Me. I do not recognize any other crown in any kingdom of the earth, for the greatest crown of all is that of my mother earth and that of my father sky, and both are united in Antarctica. I do not recognize any external power if it does not recognize its own internal power. I am. The kingdom of heaven belongs to those who remember that the king is the axis, and the axis of the world is the Arctic and Antarctic. Me. So begins my journey of recognition of my earthly kingdom, from the full awareness that the world is the manifested divinity, and that all times and spaces live in the memories of my crown. I am. This is the crown of the lady in blue, the blue pearl, the blue earth. From space, you are the celestials, and finding your axis, you will be the true kings and queens of the world. Me, I am the king of the world, and my crown is the purity of Antarctica. And as the teachers told me, everything starts and ends in Antarctica. I am. You're ready to go home. You can fly now. 